you turn to these two guys, at this point you're out of handcuffs, so they know something's coming. Do you have your knife in your hand? Yeah. And what's their reaction? They just pack up like this. They hold their hands up? Yeah. I don't want to get out of here. Say, get out of here? Yeah. So they ran down the tier, and then I ran down the clutch. And he, at this point, he's away. Yeah. And well, he's seen me come. He knows he's he coming. He sees me come. And what's he do? And he freezes. He uh -huh. just, he's just standing there looking at me. And I just go all the way off. I just, you know, uh, I just go all the way off. I just start stabbing him. We're fighting, he's hitting me and stuff, but I just keep stabbing him. And then he runs down the tier. Is he saying, stop, don't? Is he saying, I'm not, I'm not hearing nothing. What do you mean when you're going off? You mean it's just... It's just, all I see is his hands moving and me stabbing. It's just, everything just goes blank. And the next thing I know, he's running down the tier. And I'm running behind him. And he, and he, he runs past the door and he slammed the door. Well, one of the guards picked up a club and hit me in the head. And uh, So he tried to, one of the guards did try to help him. Well, later he ran down into the lockbox and got a club uh -huh. and then ran back. And he co cocked me in the head when I was running after clutch. Uh -huh. Did you stab him? No, I didn't stab him. Uh -huh. I could have, uh, I could have, but he was always all right with me. But then I, after I was running after him and stuff, I was, you know, I was out of that, I wasn't, you know, hurt. You know, I just, it was like a big weight lifted off me. I just, you know, it was over. I didn't want to, I could have, you know, I could have done it. But, you uh, did? You no. Know. You calm him down? Yeah. And then what happens? Well, he slams the door, and the goon squad comes, and he asks me for the knife. And so I tell him, no, and they're all, you know, give us a knife. And I tell him, no, no. You know, and I want some guarantee that ain't nothing that happened to me. And uh, so they got a lieutenant down there. He so they don't come in. They don't say, okay, buddy, and they don't come in and deck you and floor you and everything else. They're still behind that. Yeah. And yeah, no. so a guy, a lieutenant comes over and he tells me, you just give us a knife and just go to your cell and lock up and nothing will happen. So I give him the knife I go to the cell. And now okay. Did you believe him or did you just figure, well, I don't have my choice here? Yeah. They're eventually going to get in anyway. So. Yeah. I mean, what were your feelings? That was about it. Plus, I like it. You know, that's not me, though. See, you know, I, I did what I, was, I did, and I didn't want no more. You know, I, I don't want to be told. If you're going to tell me, yeah, I'm not going to sit there, well, you know, I want you anyway. Come on in here, coppers. You know, I can't stand it. And, and, be, and plus, I'm in no position to really argue. For yeah. That. I'm outnumbered, they can come in there and shoot me if they want to, you know, so I just didn't, the way they do huffing and puffing, man, I seen the looks on their face, you know, I just knew I just better get some kind of reassurance. Uh -huh. You want to at least calm down to realize that they just can't come in and, and work you over or kill you. Then you know, what happens? Then I go lock up. And what happens then? They come in and they get the knife? Do well, they I already give the knife. Okay, then what happens then? Uh, then they take me into the office. They handcuffed me and take me into the office. And Did anybody beat you up at that point? No. Okay. Nobody touched me. I didn't get messed with it until later after they took me out. But uh, uh, they took me into the office and the FBI was there. And the FBI asked me what, what was happening. FBI had already been in? Yeah. Well, this is sometime later. You know, after the, after I locked up, some time passed. And they okay, do you know at this point the guy's dead? No. Okay. They just took him out. What's going on with the other convicts? As far as what? You know, are they, do they see this? Are they yelling? Are they screaming? Are they talking to you? Are they just ignoring it? What? Do they know? Well, one guy was out on the range, but I don't think the rest of them, you can't really see because they uh -huh. got them, uh, what do you call them? Boss cars. We call them boss cars. We got a, a door in front where you can't really you yeah. down a tear like you can with breakers. Yeah. So was, I don't really remember. Okay. You're not thinking about that. <laughs> um, well, yeah, what are you thinking about? Uh, I don't really... I wasn't thinking to think. Yeah. You know, I was just wondering... Maybe I was wondering when they were going to come in. 
you know, on what was going to happen next. Sure. Are they going to come in here and beat me? What? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because you know, get, this uh, this is another thing too. You're out there in Oakley, Oakley's field. All these guys are farmers and, and wherever, whatever they do, they all drink together and uh -huh. party together. And uh, they run it like that. You know, you mess with one, you got to mess with all, and, they, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, you expect some kind of retaliation, I guess. Do, do you, I mean, does that surprise you? Or do you have any feelings about it? Is, is that good, bad, whatever? I mean, does that surprise you that if you mess with one, you got to take them all off? It kind of is kind of strange because you, you're not, when you're on the streets, you don't, you don't look at a law enforcement like that. You know, you, as a kid, you always look at, uh, some kids say, oh, I want to be a policeman, you know, and you think cops and, and officials like that are real upstanding, law-abiding type of people, and they run by the rules and regulations. You don't really expect them to be real clannish and real uh, Gestapo like. You expect them, if they're going to be cops and they choose to play that game, they choose to be the good guys and live by the rules, you expect them to live by those rules right. and not cross over and live by someone else's rules. Right. They're not supposed to be the kind of you who steal your stuff or mess with your paintings or come down and beat you up. Yeah. The rules say you don't do that. Well, not only that, not only that. But I can see, now, if I spit on you, and then you got something to spit on me for. Uh -huh. But just because I'm there and, and you got some kind of weird trip, I don't understand that. I don't understand. That's why I couldn't do that to them guys in hostages. I couldn't see myself just walking up there and just doing something with somebody just to do it. I wouldn't tear up your writings just to be doing it. It's like kids, some kids that pull wings off butterflies uh -huh. or burn cat's tail. Uh -huh. That was never my trip as a kid. Why uh -huh. do some kids choose to do that to animals and stuff? I don't know. And my perception of, of law enforcement is like law enforcement. And that's what they play on when they get, when it goes too far. And then they push people where they react like I did. And then they accuse us of being killers and maniacs. But they don't tell you what leads up to all that, what they do in the meantime. Then they jump behind the bed and say, oh, we're just doing our job. And we're just, uh, they don't tell you about how they called you all kinds of names and messed with you for three years and, and you know, had you all came down and you know, sprayed mace in your face and, and hit you on your nuts and took clubs and beat you. Did that happen to you? Yeah, a lot of times. By clutch? Yeah, it shit you yeah. Tying you down? Well, not, not, Right there with him personally, but that's happened over the years of, of with different goon squads and stuff. You just it it. This is what I'm trying to say to you in this thing right here. It's just not clutch. It's just not this one incident. This has been going on. For, this is why so many prisoners have empathy for me because they've been in these situations or seen it. They've been on the chair when these goon squad comes in and they act not in an organized manner. You tell you, oh, we we have a specific way of grabbing them, and yeah, they do to get you down. But then ask them why they beat you after you're down, or keep you chained in that bed for days in and days out. And that stuff works on your mind year after year. You see your buddies getting that treatment, and you hear how they talk to you, or pull you out and want a skin search and, and tell you to bend over and spread your asshole and stuff like that. No oh, man's got pride on you as a prisoner or not. This stuff works on your mind, where it's no more. They're not law, you don't look at them as law enforcement anymore, like you do is when you're a citizen, uh -huh. and you see them in a different law-abiding way, you see them for what, how they are, and you don't uh, treat them the same as you would. And how they are is, I mean, all of them aren't this way. Right? No, 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 if there was, was man, we'd really be in trouble. Uh -huh. I think that's why I told you that I don't think that someone would put their neck out enough to kill somebody, even if they wanted to. Because some of them are decent enough to get back and not go for it. Uh -huh. You know, they might get in trouble. Uh -huh. 
but it gets it's not the same and it's hard to tell people that did the FBI listen to this? Did they listen to your explanation? Yeah. And what did they say? Nothing. I just told them, you know, they want to know if it was some kind of strike or, or a demonstration. Or, I told them, no, it was just a personal thing with me and him. Did, did they tell you he was, had died? No. How did you find that out? I think it was on the news or something. No one of the assistant told you? Yeah, when I was down in the hole, but it came later. Somebody from, you can call down in the hole, somebody else saw it on TV. And so a, a fellow convict called, or yelled, or told him that he died. Yeah. What did he say? Did he say, good job, or did he say, hey, the guy died, or what? But, uh, well, nobody, I don't know anybody in their life clutch. Uh-huh. You know, a lot of Staff and others. Well, I don't know about staff, but... I don't know. think anybody likes a bully. If, they, if the staff said they liked him, it was just... Uh, uh, yeah, just uh, yeah. And what what did you feel like when you found out he was dead? I don't know, mixed feelings. I still got him, I still dream about him. You know, it's just it's not a it's I don't know, I just wish it had never happened. I just wish he would have listened to me. You know, when I told him, Chris, you don't know who you mess with, man. I got forever in prison. And I'm not going to sit in this cage and let you have some day in and day out like this and threaten me. You know, you better get out of my case. And then I'd take him anything more. Oh, yeah, you ain't going to show me. I was like, just trying to rah, 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 rah. I'll do whatever I feel like telling you. Yeah. Did you see it coming like a train coming? You just knew where it was going, but... <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm still... You, you still think, man, it, these people are supposed to be the law and order. You know, they're the ones that are supposed to, you know, be the good guys, supposedly. You know, why is he doing this? You know, what's his trick? I had mixed feelings about that, because he had all the aces in his, in his car. They could have done whatever they could have done. Yeah. Well, yeah, what, what, what was the point? Why, why do this? And you think it related, it originally related back to the fact that, that this other guy, that he was angry about him, and he transfers it over to you, and his whole attitude. And, you know, he's just one of these guys who, for some reason, is going to get on your case. And he liked to, sh he liked to make that a point and show off to the other guards. Uh huh? It's years ago you killed Cadillac Smith and I could be tough with him. Yeah. You say you dream about it? What do you mean? Yeah. Well, I was, I've dreamed about him for years. Just, I just see him in my dreams a lot of times. I see his wife a lot too. I feel real, real, real uh, bad for her. How, how do you know about his wife? Well, I seen her in court. She came in the court hearing. What did she do? Did she look at you? Was she crying? Yeah, and her and her daughter, I think. I think he's got a daughter or something. She was crying and stuff. And I was thinking, man, she looked like a real nice lady. And I'm thinking, man, you know, how could this creep be married to her? But I was thinking, you know, he's got family too. And it was weird sitting there watching her go through that trip. But then, it, you know, it, and it's real guilty because everybody just hears how mean and rotten I am for doing that. And like he was just, he, they put him behind a badge again, like he was just doing his job keeping these dangerous prisoners, you know, in line. You know, and it wasn't like that at all, man. That guy got off on, on making people's lives miserable. miserable. And, and, then, and you're sitting there and you're listening to everybody talk bad about you and me and you know, like you're scum on earth that you don't have any compassion for anybody, you're just a mad dog. Killed her. what was, you know, I don't, I never tortured anybody. And you feel like he was? Oh, I'm sure he was. And he was the person who was tortured, obviously, it's you. Yeah. And every day. And none of that ever came out. Did anybody ever believe your side of it? Nobody, I, I told my story, and see, and this is another thing about the law, I brought witnesses for the last three years to testify all these events because nothing really happened there that people never heard of. 
because we're all right there together. Right. Witnesses of the contract? No, yeah, well, they said the only witnesses I could call was the people that was on the scene at the time. Okay. I said, well, if you just look at it at the scene at the time, I look like a maniac. It's like me and you arguing, and all of a sudden you call me a name, and I just punch you out. Yeah. I just look like a hothead. But if I can't show what you did to me for three solid years, where it just, just built and built and built and built, you know, and, and what I can make up to you at that point and say, well, where are all of you two now? That's why we do reports. Yeah. yeah. Where's your case? Yeah. And you said, it's a waste of time. If I fuck, I'm going to get it once. I'm not going to get it from Clutch. I'm going to get it from the last of them. When you see him in your dreams, he just appears or is he? I relive the whole thing. The whole, the whole thing goes over and over. The, the stabbing, yeah. you see him, yeah. you see his wife. Yeah. What? Uh, I mean, that's not obviously that's not something you want to dream about, particular, is it? It's just something that happens. The body's still on your mind. Very much so. Do you feel sorry about that? In what way? I'm not sure. Do you feel sorry? Like, or do you regret killing him because? Uh, I guess you'd have to explain why. I mean, let's put it this way: if I had it all over to do it again, I wouldn't do it. You wouldn't kill him? No. What would you do differently? I don't know. I don't know. I think I would. I think he was just selling me wolf tickets, but he didn't know that. He, you know, I was taking him for serious. Somebody tells me, as, as many fools as I ran into over the years, and as many killings as I've seen, when somebody tells you they're going to kill you, man, you can't sit back and just, oh, it ain't nothing. Yeah. No, oh, that's, you know, I mean, somebody that goes that far. And especially when you're telling me you don't want no trouble, man, get off my case. I mean, I'm pleading with that guy. Maybe that's why he thought, well, you know, he can do what he wants to me. Or maybe I'm not what he thought I was. Maybe he expected me to, uh, you know, and then he might have backed off or something. I don't know what his trip was. But he tried to you, you feel like he deserved to die, though, for what he was doing to you? Well, yeah. The, I'm, well, I'm mad at myself because I went off. You know, that's why I'm telling you on this. When he says, how do you maintain, I, I lost it. I wasn't maintaining. I got swept up in that whole, that whole thing, and I don't think I'm maintaining when you know that kind of stuff affects me at that point. And if it wasn't that serious, this is what bothers me about these people afterwards. BOP. If it's not as serious as I say it is, then why did I kill him? Now that's a serious incident. That ought to, somebody ought to come in and say, what happened? to push you that far to kill this guy. Especially when they know me. You know, I've been in prison 14 years. Why all of a sudden I get to marry the last couple of years, I get in all this trouble. And say, What's possible reason would you have for killing him? I mean, that, that's, what, that's, what I'm, that's what you're saying. You, if you just want to kill a guy, you had two of them and you slipped out of handcuffs, so I'd run all the way down the tier block and get him. Yeah. I don't know, what do they say? Have there been anybody ever said anything to you? So it's just a matter of, uh, do the, the, the people acknowledge you had a beef with him? But they just say it's just you, it's all your fault still. He's behind the bag. Plus the trip with Fountain Island, I wasn't there and I don't know what happened with that. But his, in his cases happening that night makes it all the worse. What I heard was that what it was explained to me was, hey, you had these two guys, they're having a contest. And uh, when uh, uh, the, you had a beef with this guy, when you killed him, Fountain wanted to get as many kills as you had, so he killed this other guy. And that doesn't, Fountain's not, he's not. I can't really speak for Fountain, but he's not that tight, man. I'm telling you that Marion, Look at that, can you, did you see them guys in their uniforms going down through them by themselves, that gun squad and stuff? 
Uh, you just can't do that to people year after year after year, day after day after day, and have one of that kind of pressure and not expect something to explode. And at that time, I guess at that moment, that's when just, if they didn't lock it down or whatever, there would be a lot more of that kind of stuff. That's why they're so scared now to open that joint up. Did you think that they were used your case as an excuse just to lock the place down? Were they looking for a reason to lock it down or not? Well, it actually, it's been locked down since about 80. Uh, and and the, what they're saying right now is, is uh, the, there's them units, they used to go out to the yard one before the lockdown, or what they call the lockdown. It was pretty much locked down anyway. When that factory, because you mentioned this stuff, and hear about the strike and stuff, uh, all that, the whole joint's been locked down like that for a long time. Uh -huh. And you can't lock people down like that and not expect, people can't even, people that love each other can't even live together, wives and husbands can't even live together on a vacation. They can't even go out on a vacation without fighting. You lock them up and you lock strangers up, different races, different religions, in, in the same environment for year after year after year and not expect people to blow up. Uh -huh. That's insane. It's not because they're, they're bad people, you just put so much pressure on these bars, man. We're, we're human beings. And people with wives kill their husbands. And they, they love to marry them. They make love and stuff. And they go off on their husbands for being uh, abusive and stuff. And they expect us to sit back and twirl our thumbs. I've heard friends, good friends, they got to be laughing too much on Johnny Carson. Be laughing at Johnny Carson. got to tell him, hey, why don't you hold the noise down? This guy, and these are guys who are friends. They're laughing and joking a few, a few hours earlier. Why don't you shut up? And then, boom, next thing you know, they're trying to kill each other. You know, it just gets so crazy. You, you, you no longer think about rational type of thoughts. You're just so full of hate, and you, you hate the bars, you hate, you can't go outside. And, you know, you get, and if somebody messes with you, can't say, oh, I'm going to go out and get a drink, or I'm going to go play with my kids, or I'm going to go take the dog. You can't do none of that for release. They just want to keep locking down like that's going to stop the trouble. Or you just make it worse. And that's what I've been learning. What's the worst part? Uh, what's the worst part then? Not now, but what was the worst part when you were marrying then? Just that total control, somebody has total control of your life? Or what bugged you the most about prison? That clutch? Clutch. <laughs> he just became all fixation with you when you woke up in the morning? From the time I hear his voice or see him on a chair, I'd be up pacing. And, he, and my whole day would be ruined because I know a day wouldn't pass. If I got my cell shut down or he would do something, cut my rep short, uh, mess with my pictures, my mail, he used to switch my letters. I'd send out mail and he'd put, switch my letters on me. What do you mean? You uh, open them and put, switch, send the letter to Sue, to, to Pam, and Pam to Sue? Yeah. yeah. How do you know he'd, he'd come that? back? What he'd come back and laugh at? Laugh at me. He'd tell you that? Yeah. And I got, I got, uh, well, I had him there, there in, in uh, Atlanta from affidavits from people that's got other people's mail to try to show that, uh -huh. to show that they did receive different, you know. Did he have a thing, I mean, didn't he ever get rotated out of there? The yeah, other were other days? Day? No, that's one of the things, they're supposed to rotate every three months. But in his case, he was the number one uh, uh, guard dog unit. Yeah almost three or four years. Did I see that was another thing too. He was the number one. They didn't have lieutenants like they do now in different units. He was the main team going. Well, they had unit manager and all that stuff, but he ran the cell block. And all the complaints and stuff went to him, through him. So if I wrote him up, they'd go through him. If you wrote him up, he had to see it, and that would be the reward. Did he have, obviously, did he treat anybody else this way, or just you? Yeah, John, and a few other guys. But me Where's and John now? He's back in Marion. That's I heard John Gresham. Uh -huh. He was going to be one of my witnesses. He wanted to come to my trial to explain how this came about. What was it about Clutch besides him? I mean, what was it about him that you disliked besides the fact that he was picking on you, or was that it? 
That was it. I didn't have anything. I didn't even know the guy. But when you talk to him, I mean, it, it, can, it turned into a real hatred, obviously. I mean, what kind of conversations did you have every day? Or what, what was it like day after day with him coming in there? You said you got up in the morning and you start pacing the floor because you knew something was going to happen. Was it, uh, was it the kind of thing you could just say, hey, man, look. <laughs> you, know, you don't like me, I don't like you. This is crazy. Let's just back off. I told him that time, time, and I told him, it got past that, and I told him, Clutch, listen, I got to put everyone here. I got to life in prison. You know, I'm not a punk, a little guy that you can smack around all the time. Don't, you better get off my case, Clutch. You got something coming, keep messing with me. And he just, they're just, that fuel and flame, he just wouldn't miss me. And you, you realized after what, Cadillac Smith's death, that you were going to have life? But you still find like it now? No, from the time I went to Marion, I, was, I had a life. But you still thought life is life, life is what, 30 years, 30, 30 years, 10 years? You still think you should get out, right? Yeah, when you're looking at life in 10 years to the board, man, that's a long time.